Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number four in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So in our previous videos, we've created our Rails blog app. We're going through the Rails Getting Started guide here. We've um, created our articles controller with just the index version, set that as our root route for our server which is currently down and then in our previous video we went through and generated the articles model and we spent most of that video going through the rails migration so you um, with the model generated you specify the attributes that you want and then you can um, migrate that which will create the table in the database and allow for you to now interact with the the rails model and that's what we're going to look at in this episode so we're going to start by going into the rails console um, the the command here is the the safest way to do this depend like it's operating system agnostic and will always get you to the the rails console in the correct version of rails on every system but here i'm just going to go and type rails c i could have copied and pasted that um, bin rails console command there you can see loading development environment specifies rails 7.0.0 and then we're going to so we're now in a uh an irb shell here so uh ruby uh, by default comes with the the IRB shell it's uh, if you've ever worked with uh, Node.js or something like that it's a similar sort of thing with this, uh, uh, a REPL sort of thing read evaluate print loop so you can execute these commands see the results of those commands and we'll we'll be doing some of that here I'm going to pause and get my uh, screen such that we can look at the guide on the top half and the console on the bottom half. All right, so we've got things visually reconfigured here so that we can look at the, the guide and the console uh, a little bit more effectively. So I'm just gonna copy this item here. So the what we're do doing here is we're creating a new article object with the attributes title equal to hello rails, body I am on rails. And we're assigning it to a local variable which we're calling article in this case we could call it anything that we want so I'll go to our article here we can see that um, you can see in the the screen here that we've only initialized the object we haven't saved it to the database yet so right now this is just being held in memory if I were to articles equals article dot all you can see I've got an, an empty set of articles here right now and then if I wanted to article here we can see uh, ID is null it is nil the um, title is hello rails body is I'm on rails we can use dot notation here to change one of these uh, so change the title to hello rails taxation is theft we look at our article and that is now the um, the the item here so we can now if I wanted to the next thing we're going to do is save this article to the database so we call article dot save and if this succeeds it will return true it will return a boolean so um, if it's true it'll be a true if it's false it'll be a false and we could um, examine the errors associated with them if it didn't say it correctly. So we were successful. We now have an article in our database. Um, if we do article.all, now we can see that we've got that article in there. And if we look at our article now, you can see that it now has an ID uh, associated with that primary key in the database. 
and then it's also got created at and update updated at timestamps um, associated with them. If I wanted to change this article, let's say I want to append something to this body, I'll do a plus equals here. We can see now our article has those uh, those changes there. I'm going to add an exclamation point to the title. Got to type article correctly. see now we've got that and if we do save again it'll get updated and the um, the updated at should change here we can see now in the um, SQL being generated by active record is now doing an update statement rather than an insert statement like we had um, insert into articles previously with the values now we've got uh, update articles and we're, we're setting title body updated at uh, even though we didn't modify updated at it takes the current timestamp and does that for us so if we have the article now you can see that the, um, the updated at is at a different time than the created at and we've uh, successfully saved the article I'm gonna just pause and add a second article in here so that we've um, we've got more than one to work with. So we've got a second article here and you can see here instead of doing article.new I'm doing article.create which I need to close that parentheses but this will uh, instead of just initializing the article it will create and return uh, the article saving it to the database in the process if we're successful. And we can see that now if we do dot length is now two. Uh, you can also while you're here, so even though we've got article two here, we could do a different uh, variable. And assign that there. Uh, if you uh, that article dot find so that'll take the ID of of the um, the active record object that you're trying to do this gets um, inherited by all rails models if I were to do something so we don't have an article number three right now if I were to do this and type in three it's going to raise an error you can see couldn't find article with ID equals three um, Active record not found error happens there. Uh, in, in some active record query items, it'll just return false or return return nil. But in the case of the find method, if it doesn't find um, an object a, a record in the database with that specific ID, then it's going to, um, to to raise an error like that. So um, got article dot all. Um, and then the the Rails guide goes on to talk about how you can go to the Active Record Basics and Active Record Query Interface. We're going to do one more thing here, um, kind of anticipating. So we've done create, we've done read, uh, we've done update. Let's try doing destroy. So I'm going to create an article here that I don't want. All right, so I'm here creating an unfortunate article that I don't want to keep around. Um, so we've got title and a body here we've created that article and if we do if we do article dot all we can now say there's three I don't want that bootlicker article so 
call destroy on it and um, that will return uh, the object being destroyed that you can assign to a, an object and then um, it will now our articles will be down to two items and as noted here uh, articles the, the the return value here is an active record relation so article active record relation um, so it notes that the um, the particular model that you're using there rather than just a generic active record relation and then article class will uh, will be the article model here and when uh, the just the printing of that that class um, by default in Rails, it'll give you the attributes that are available in that model. Exit out now of the uh, the Rails console, and then I'm quickly going to um, do another command that might be helpful, and that's uh, Rails DB console. So this will, depending on what your um, database system is so if it's MariaDB it's going to go to MariaDB if it's Postgres it's going to go to Postgres whatever else you configure as your your backend right now it, it's launched into uh, SQLite 3 so if you wanted to now you can see that it's uh, you're, you're able to see at the uh, the database level um, Kind of the same stuff that we were looking at in our Rails console, but in the native um, database item. I'm going to press Control D to get out of there, and we'll continue on with uh, showing a list of articles. So um, the thing we're going to now our index before was just an empty method that didn't really have anything. Um, interesting going on. It was just disp displaying our, our article index.html.erb, which was all static text, which is going to not that interesting. And you, if you're just doing static HTML, then there's really no point in um, all the overhead associated with a Rails application. But what you want is an interactive application, and that's what we're going to start working on now. So uh, we're going to add this instance variable articles um, being assigned as article dot all so you can see when the when we were working with the the rails console I was creating all local variables but uh, it notes here that the instance variables in addition to being accessible by the controller are also accessed by the view so that uh, allows you to, um, to 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 kind of share that that instance variable between your your controller and and your view in um, in your application. So we'll go in now and set that. So our articles are, are now article.all will get assigned to the instance variable articles, which will be available to us in our view. So before we change our view, we'll note that we'll go back to our test here. And note that our, our controller test is going to fail if we don't change it. So um, first thing we're going to, to do here is we're going to change this, go back to our, um, our new view content here. It's going to now be articles. So we'll change that in our test. Also going to, if we look at our view code here, uh, we're going to have one, a number of list items that are equal to the uh, the number of articles. So the way we do go about doing that is via 
assert select will work for this too. Instead of the actual content here, we're going to do And while we're here, we'll also look at take a look at our fixtures. So uh, by default, Rails uses fixtures. There are other testing methods available to you here. So the um, by default, they're kind of boring. I'm, um, I typically go in and make them more customized than just one and two. So I'll pause and paste in some um, some content here for these two fixtures. So I've got my two fixture articles now, nerd and why. Save that and I should be able to go now, rail C test. Oh, what have I done? Looks like I can't do that. Let me try the Rails Env. Loading test environment. So here. that didn't get updated when I save that file Let me exit out Showing no articles now. Try one more. Now I've got my fixtures loaded. So we should have a test failure now because We're expecting our articles, but we haven't changed our index.html.erb. We'll go back to the guide here, get the, the code here, and uh, as we're going through here, so uh, we've got the, the new h1 tag, the header for, the, for this. Um, index page and then we've got an unordered list and then inside of that unordered list tags we're taking that articles instance variable that we set and we are um, going to go through each of these so articles each do now we've got um, this kind of 
block variable article and then we're doing a list item with the article's title. So if we save this, hopefully our tests will now pass and they do. And if we go and look at how this is rendered in our application, you can see articles and then we've got the the articles that we created earlier in the develop developer console um, for the development environment there. Uh, since the guide talks through it, we'll look through here. So we've got embedded, we've got HTML with embedded Ruby here. So the um, the bracket percent sign without the equal sign is telling you to execute Ruby code, but not print the result of it back to the HTML. So we're taking the articles, we're looping through them, and this is the um, the limiter of the do, and then at the end of that iteration, at the end of that block, we have the end there also in um, the embedded Ruby, and also without printing, but then in each of these list items, we are using the angle percent equals, and that is going to take the article's title and print it to the um, to your output of that. And if we go in to the console, add a third article. interesting but it's there and we can see we refresh the page and now we've got that third article showing up in our, our view so and then the guide talks what we were just talking about with the the articles dot each um, we just went to our local host and this kind of goes through what was happening there so um, we are in that articles controller it makes the request the get request to localhost 3000 to the articles controller which we have set as our root route it um, takes it to the index action of the articles controller the index action of the ar articles controller we're um, doing article dot all to get our articles assigning them to the instance variable article and then um, by using Rails convention over configuration, where um, the index action will be in apps views articles index, taking that instance variable, looping through the different articles in there, and printing out the title in each list item. And then we're sending that HTML back to the browser. So this concludes the uh, section six on this. We'll exit out of the console. we'll take a look at our git status. So since our last commit, we've modified our articles, articles controller, we've uh, modified the index view, and then we've modified our test. And then in our previous video, we generated the article model and we didn't commit at the end of the last video when we did our migration. So we've got our article model, um, we've got the, um, the DB migrate, with our my, with our migration, the schema.rb, and then our article fixture, which we were just working on, and then there's an article test. So let's take a look quickly before we commit at the, the article test. We don't have any real logic there yet, so it's just kind of got that test the truth um, 
default there and our model for the article doesn't have it's just an empty class right now um, but as you can see because we inherited from application record we get things like article dot um, create article dot save um, all those other destroy um, article dot all so all of those things come as a result of inheriting from application record and well uh, as we actually add validations and stuff like that going farther in this guide we'll we'll flesh out that that model unit test and the um, the article model file here but we'll commit everything that we've got at this point let me see we've got our modified files our new files Sign and write a commit message. I'll pause while I do that. So we've got our commit message. We'll close that out. Close our save files. Thankfully, they were all saved. And then push to the remote. And we'll pick up in the next video with section seven of the guide. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.